Changing the game means we shatter the standard. Progress requires a powerful pace, but the right tools can take us to a braver place. Some come to play the game. We're here to change it. Make way. Hi, my name is Carly Samuelson. I'm 26 years old and I am a professional basketball player. Um, this is my mom, Karen Samuelson. She grew up in England. She played a variety of sports, but she ended up playing basketball, which is how she met, met my dad, who was playing professionally overseas in England. And that's how me and my sisters came to be. <laughs> I'm Katie Lou. I am Carly's younger sister. And this is our mom. She's our biggest fan and supporter and has always pushed us to be our best selves, both as athletes and more importantly, as people. She played netball as well as basketball until she was 21, where she played on England's youth team and won national championships on every other netball team she was on. Hi, I'm Mother Jones. Um, they gave me that nickname, so it stuck with me from when they were younger. And these are my two beautiful daughters. Two of I have three beautiful daughters, and I'm proud of all three of them. Basically, to start off, I guess, Mom, what was your most proudest moment of your athletic career? So I chose sports to get out of the situation I was in. I lived in a very male-dominated society, and I, I realized in middle school that sports was a way out because I thought, oh, I'm I'm pretty strong and I'm I'm pretty smart and I can use this and and that's why I, I went into sports and it kind of gave me a different family as it was at the time a, a bunch of women who were strong women and that's got me into college and um, took me on a totally different path than I probably would have if I hadn't got into sports. Were there sports or different things that you wanted to do that you couldn't? Oh, yes. Um, back in the day, um, literally women were not allowed to play soccer. They were not allowed to play basketball in high school. Um, it was banned in 1921, in fact, in England, and it wasn't um, allowed again, like to play on the same fields as men until 1971, I think. And the first professional league was until 2018. So I never had the chance to do those sports in high school. Did you like have any role models ahead of you or were you kind of finding your own path going into it? I, I was finding my own path, but there Virginia Wade, for an example, was a tennis player in England who won Wimbledon. So there was, I watched women like that, Billie Jean King, you know, uh, Martina Navratilova. You you watch those women and you recognize that, wow, these, you know, women can do as much as the men. You know, we we have been held back, but these women kind of paved the way back then in a very male dominated sport to show that they could be successful. So what was like the first moment, mom, that you saw the real effects of Title IX? When I came to the United States, um, growing up in a very male dominated society, I really didn't see um any equality movement um, in my time. Obviously, it's, it's probably been a little after over there. But when I came over here and became a teacher here, and especially uh, in physical education, Title IX was a dream for me because I was allowed to use that. And we, we were co-ed. We taught co-ed PE classes. A lot of people didn't like that. But um, I was allowed to use that and say, no, we need to stay co-ed. Because in middle school, I thought it was wonderful for both boys and girls to socialize and see how they could participate in activities together against each other. Girls played flag football, uh, baseball. We, we came up with all kinds of different activities and dance that both boys and girls, they did together. And it, it broke down barriers as far as I was concerned. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And when they tried to stop us teaching co-ed, I used Title IX to, you know, to keep it going. I never thought twice about, oh, should I be playing basketball? Should <laughs> I be playing soccer? I can't imagine you didn't even have the choice 
to play it. Um, was that motivation for you and dad to put us in so many sports? Our whole goal was for you all to be active. And it really didn't matter the sport or the activity. Um, we wanted to give you all of them <laughs> so you could choose basically what you would like to keep doing. Mom, you have played like a huge role in um, my life and getting me, you know, like we were just talking about opportunities to do what I love and figure out what I want to do with my path. And um, you were at every one of our games growing up, taking stats on the sideline and always, um, you know, just encouraging me to be the best I could be. And I don't think I would have got there without the support from you. And because I and Carly and Bonnie, we all were able to have support from both you and dad at all times. You saw Title IX start, but, you know, that was already in place for me. So I had women to follow. I played for Tara Vanderveer at Stanford, um, who's an absolute legend and pioneer in women's basketball, but in, in women's sports in general. Actually playing for her and being around her every day, it, it kind of made me think about it more than I do now because I'm in, in the presence of someone that was so key in changing history. Um, so again, like I'm glad we get to talk about this today because it's kind of bringing back that memory of, you know, how far we've come and how far that we can go. Lou, how do you feel that you can make way for other athletes, younger athletes? I feel like I'm in a point right now, um, especially in the WNBA, where we have this opportunity like right on the edge of pushing this to go even farther. And so, um, you know, as an athlete, as a woman, I want to continue to help push that as far as I can so that players below, players younger, anyone can you know do what they want to do. People put in so much work to get those changes and I want to be part of the next group that keeps pushing it forward for when other players come right into the league, just like when I came right into the league. Speaking up, I think is the biggest thing. Don't just be satisfied because I think people are trying to invest more in women and mm -hmm. want to be a part of the change. But, you know, like mom said, you, there's a lot that needs to happen, a lot more that goes into it yeah. because of how long it's been pushed down as far as you can see. I don't wake up and you know, say thanks Title IX, but I should because this is why we get to do what we do. This is why I'm in Spain right now able to play basketball as a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's people ahead of me that I have no idea putting so much time and work into it that have really paved the way for us as athletes. We should be saying, why not everybody? Yeah, I agree. Let's have more. Let's have more of what's happening the reason I love sports, it starts with an even playing field, or it's supposed to start with an even playing field. And if you've never had an even playing field, how are you supposed to succeed? When you have a great story, an inspiring story, which there are so many across the board of, of women's sports, and you're not hearing them, then yeah, you can't push women's sports forward. I think that's a big thing that, you know, hopefully moving forward, um, people can continue to invest in that because when you hear the great things behind all these athletes and what they've been through, then you'll really connect with them. And, you know, our sport, everyone, sports, women's sports, will be able to grow much more with that. Well, this whole visual, you know, being able to do this. I remember when you went to college and I was devastated, by the way, without telling you, um, <laughs> because you weren't going to be close to me. But Having a screen where I could see you and interact with you was the best thing ever in my life. <laughs> I mean, look, here we are. I'm in Spain. I know. In Florida, I know. You're in California. We're across the world yeah. right now. <laughs> so, Mom, was it ever difficult for you to see people or girls now getting these opportunities, but you didn't? Um, not difficult to see. I thought it was wonderful. Um, and I think more needs to happen. I saw these things happen in middle school where we would have co-ed and we'd do all kinds of activities. And then I'd see girls going to high school and not be allowed to do some of the activities that they did in middle school. So there was still a long way to go and there is still a long way to go now. I mean, the, the movement right now is great. It really is, but it's not enough. Women have been held down for so long 
and um, and deprived of opportunities. That's really what has happened um, to women. And it's it's time. You know, I hear the arguments, you know, about all oh, the revenue and everything else. Well, there's no operation or um, professional league or whatever ha- that has started without uh, c- corporate interest putting money into it, whether that's earning money or losing money. Um, there are there are men's teams that lose money, but the opportunities have to be provided. Women are good enough and are going to be better when they get the opportunities they should have had all along. There is such a balance between being grateful and being complacent. And, you know, I think we're super grateful for the opportunities we have, or I am like grateful to to be in a place where I can play a sport professionally um, and see other women around me, you know, getting more and more opportunities. But sometimes when you're grateful, you can just sit there and say, thanks. And this is the ceiling, you know, but it, it's, it's a balance of not taking that and just being satisfied, but seeing how we can push through that ceiling. There's not a ceiling yet. We can't see anything. The, the opportunities are just starting to come. Using the woman around you and, and your teammates and your friends to uplift and inspire you to push them to be better and they push you to be better and kind of this whole networking connection thing to all uplift together. Yes, definitely. I think uh, if I hadn't had those connections, I would never have been where I am now. I would never have gone to college. I was expected to go get a job and get married at 16 and have kids and not have dreams. But if women have to keep this alive, we have to keep pushing and we have to support and, and, uh, and keep being resilient and keep asking for more. Um, because we have not, you know, been given nearly enough. You know, we need to keep moving forward. Make way. Make way, we do. We need to make way. Lovely mom. Mic drop. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> Remember mom's basketball league she used to play in? Cause yeah, I do. Today, I've never seen dad actually play basketball like besides just for fun, we, when we were younger, mom, you took us to this adult league you were in, you yes. took all three of us in the stroller. I remember. Um, uh-huh. and you were killing it with your friends. <laughs> yes, that was, that was really fun for, for exercise. And, uh, the young college teams would come and play against us and get a little bit serious. And, uh, <laughs> we were competitive too, but it would, would be interesting that one of you would be flipping over the bar on the side and I'd have to run over and grab you. <laughs> running back on defense and put you back in the stroller and <laughs> it was it was fun I remember you would bring us to school sometimes and you actually brought in like strong women to show us even before each other like um some of our closest oh, family yes. friends Lauren and Amanda Sims you knew you taught them and you saw them you know they played sports and stuff. And so you brought them around us to kind of show us what, you know, we could be. And I remember growing up watching them play Mm -hmm. in high school, play in college, all three of us would watch um, them before us. They were great role models and we're still family friends. And, and they were the ones that actually got Bonnie into shooting baskets, remember? And then Carly in the Elks hoop shoot, which by the way, is a co-ed program, even though they've run the competition separately, I actually feel they could have done them together and, and yeah. you guys would have beat the boys. Thank you, mom and dad. Obviously, you guys are making me think about how much, I don't know if you were geniuses in this, but how much you really surrounded us with strong women and, and putting us in sports and really you know, believing in us. So thank you. And, and thanks for coming to talk about this today. Thanks for inspiring us always and kind of helping us as women and women athletes and the whole generation of women that you've impacted in your life. As a mom, I'm so proud and it's not been me and dad. Don't just give us credit because you guys have really um, done a lot and and on your own and it's been wonderful to watch and still wonderful to watch because I think you have so much to do and and I think you're going to have so much impact in this area. You're going to make way. Thanks, Mom. Love you.